Why is it not playing anything? There it is. Amen. My mother had one of those Euro peelers, and I swear to Christ, she tried to Euro peel everything. I was afraid to piss my pants, afraid she'd try and Euro peel my dick. I swear to God, <laughs> she fucking used that thing on everything. PTR Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of PTR here on the fabulous entire web. Uh, it's going to be one of those nights. Because I've already broken into the whiskey, so... You know, not to say that there isn't a bottle of Mountain Dew here. There is, but, uh, you know, and it's so bad I just brought the bottle. So, you know, mostly this is for medicinal purposes, you know, so. It always is. You know, <sighs> yep, this is uh, can't sleep, you know, Ugh. I tried to go to sleep last night. Didn't go to sleep until almost two. Then spent uh, most of the night coughing. Because uh, only only cough, really, when I lay down, you know, when you're supposed to be resting. But that's when the coughing starts. So, otherwise, just a scratchy voice. Uh, you guys been healthy, I hope? Yes. No. No. I. It. I. Okay. First of all, I never thought we would hit a day where Colin is the healthiest of all of us. Um, I, that is. I, I, and that I is don't rare. mean that in a negative way. I'm just. I. It's just. Yeah. I. I was standing there. It was either was it Friday or Saturday? I was just standing at the stove in my kitchen, and I went to turn, and all of a sudden, my hip. My left hip started hurting ridiculously to the point where I immediately needed medication. And the next day when I woke up after tossing and turning, trying to get comfortable, I'm looking up hip replacements. Oh. That's how bad it was. Well, that's I, I, to, I still have no idea what happened. Today is the first day that I can walk without a limp, and I have no idea what happened. Well, do you have a cane? No. Well, you should get I have one. crutches. Oh, you should get a cane. Here's the problem with that. You could get one with a sword inside. I see. I don't want a cane. I want a. I want a walking stick. A big old walking stick. Stick that <laughs> acts like a. What's a, a that I can use as a didgeridoo? Too, oh, while I, I'm at it. You want so to be when like I'm standing Gandalf. in line. So when I'm standing in line, right, and people start getting like if the line at. I can't even say Starbucks with a straight face because I don't go there. But if the line at Duncan is too long, I can just stand there in line with the didgeridoo go, <laughs> and everybody clear the hell out of my way. It, it, it's like it's like a uh, an Aboriginal um, vuvuzela. That's I, what it is. I believe in some parts of the country we would call that appropriation, Mike, and that wouldn't be cool. Probably, you know. It wouldn't be good. Or, or like, can I get one that's like the giggle stick? So when I like I turn it upside down, it's like. You could get one which is maybe you could get one that's a rain stick, you know, with all the little you know beads in it. You could do that too. You know, it's not going to be nearly as loud. Is that still appropriation? I don't know. I don't know what type. Am of, I allowed to appropriate rain? I don't know. Isn't appropriation? Uh, let me see if I can Google that. Um, what type of stick isn't appropriation? Uh, first result, five ways to cleanse your space without cultural appropriation. And no, Cisco, I don't want to be Gandalf. The toy is not working. Uh, I do not want to be Gandalf. I just don't. I don't. See, I saw this dude walking with a cane the other day, but it wasn't a cane where you're like, you know, like, like putting on the rich style with the handle. It was just like a straight up stick and it was taller and he was holding it like this while he was walking. And I was like, you know what? That is more useful because that could be used to beat the hell out of somebody if they try and take my wallet. Because that's what you want. Is, is you want you want a weapon. You don't want you know something that can be used to aid you. I want something. Look, I am. I, when it comes to medicinal products like that, I am like Alton Brown. Okay, I don't believe in single use products. You want multitaskers. 
I want to be able to use my walking stick didgeridoo as a defense weapon as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. And why well, you have a put a laser pointer in a handle? Okay, because everything's better with the, and an LED flashlight and Bluetooth. Yes, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. It's got to be Bluetooth. As we've said many times before on the show, Bluetooth makes everything better. You know, except drill batteries. <sighs> Well, what if it helps you find the drill battery? Because I lose a lot of drill batteries. They just get placed everywhere. That's, that's why you got... Do you, do you need help tracking your drill batteries? Well, uh, I can I send you something. I, I, I don't have an Apple, so I can't use AirTags. Um, you know, and... Uh, what do you got? Yeah, those are, yeah, no. I don't need those. You sure? Because I have no, but many of them from an old woot box. Talking about tech, I did get a new thing that I'll, I'll plug it in here and get it booted up, and then I'll show you, and we can talk oh, about see, it. Yes, that, it's... that's another one. I, I need I need my stick, my, my walk-in didgeridoo to have a laser pointer, and a chi charger. Bluetooth and a battery pack. Yeah. So that I can charge my phone in the event of a hurricane. Yeah. So I suddenly got... I'm not going to be able to walk with this thing. No. Uh, so I got. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's it. Connect. You need a walking stick for your walking stick. It, yeah. But can I put it on wheels? There we go. A walking stick on wheels. So I got. Measure. Uh, that is a rollator. I got one of these. Was that a Zune? No. <laughs> that was a Zune. This is a, a Spotify car thing. Now, have you guys heard about these? No. Okay, so, no. so let's say that you got an older style car. Now, now, granted, there probably is only about a five or maybe seven year range where this makes sense. Let's say you have a car that either has an aux port in or that has Bluetooth, but is not a smart car. So it doesn't have a smart radio. Okay? So, therefore, you can't Android Auto. You can't, you know, Apple CarPlay. But, you know, you can connect your phone to your car. All right? So that, you know, so that's cool. But then every time you're playing Spotify you got to look down at your phone. It, it, it takes some work to, you know, go to the next song or to play your favorite playlist or whatever. Well, what this does is this makes that so that it's more like a radio experience. So there's, a, there's this volume knob here, but it also helps you navigate the, uh, the menu. There's a little play, like play pause button, and then there's five buttons across the top, four of which you can program for... Um, quick select playlists you know you can say which playlist they fire and then the last one which is for getting into the menu and uh, powering on and off the device this thing right here uh -huh. that you are holding in your hand this will replace wedding DJs well except for it is still USB so there is a USB cable USB-C so at least they picked the right mm -hmm. plug for it right and it comes with a bunch of mounts um, and it still requires your phone. So it's still Bluetooth to your phone. And so basically you're just controlling the Spotify on your phone with an external, oh. you know, pad. But it also is, you know, it's also a touchscreen. So you can, you okay. know, you can, you can also touch this. Now the other thing is it is voice activated. So you can talk to it and just say, hey, Spotify, you know, and it'll start to listen to you. Um, Which it's doing. Yep. And, you know, you can, but it doesn't, like, make calls or any of that kind of stuff. But it, in addition to Spotify, evidently it can also control other music applications. But Spotify is the primary one. They're the ones that sell this. Now, this sold new, I think, for, for 75 bucks. It shortly then came down to 50 I picked it up for 25 on sale. And, okay. and for 25 bucks, I thought it made sense. Now... I actually I have, have yeah. I sure. actually have Android Auto in my car, so I don't necessarily need this. 
But the way I'm going to use this is on my desk because it just basically controls the Spotify account and it doesn't matter where you're playing that account from. So I can launch Spotify on my desk and then control the Spotify playback from this device. So therefore, I don't have to jump back and forth between my Spotify app on my desktop. It's like having another screen dedicated to controlling Spotify. So kind of a cool okay. little thing. You know, uh, the they, Thingiverse has come out with a few mounts that you can mount it to your, to your keyboard just as another little, you know, thing and so i'm going to play around with it for 25 bucks it was worth you know kind of getting and and experimenting with and uh well that's that could be useful too like as an audio source i guess to if you know hooking into a mixer well except for like i said it doesn't have any outputs on itself there's no outputs oh, on here okay. there's just power in uh, it just controls your phone but it is nice because if you if you didn't want to have your phone next to you when you were DJing or something, then you could just have have this, you know, and control this, you know, make a nice little dock for this on your desk. So it's kind of cool. You know, it is a it is a little niche thing, but it is still, uh, you know, something which is is interesting. And like I said, for twenty five bucks, it was worth trying out. It did come with a ton of of things. Other the other thing I did. Uh, speaking about recent purchases, was we have this, like, I think I talked about it before. It's basically like an Amazon outlet store where they get Amazon returns, and then they price it every day is a different yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I finally went there on a Friday, which is the first day. And I actually got uh, something kind of cool. I'm going to see how it works at some point. Whenever we bring back the bar studio, I got this little receiver and wireless lav mic set. And actually it came with two transmitters. So what's nifty is Bye. Colin, if we ever do the road trip out to, you know, New Jersey, now we can record audio directly into a cell phone without any issue, without a mixer being involved. So we can, you know, document the, the road trip, a little bit more effectively. And they're recharge they don't take batteries, it's all just rechargeable inside here. So that's kind of cool. Eight yeah. bucks. Eight dollars. Retails for like sixty. So yeah, nice. And the reviews um, so were speaking, okay. <laughs> so going to follow that, uh, give a quick um, product update. So one of the things I bought back on Prime Day was a Carlin kit 3.0 to add uh, wireless uh, car play to my car. Uh-huh. Right. And I'll just say, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Highly recommended. I got, it, it, I got for my birthday back in August, Nate bought me mm -hmm. the Motorola version of the same thing for Android Auto. And I would uh -huh. agree. Best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. You know, that is, that is saving wear and tear on my USB port. It's great. I just, now I've got a charger in the base of my phone that ju I just use for power when I'm in the car because I don't have a Qi charger in the car. Um, but I just, you know, slap it on there. I can just yank my phone out. I'm not putting any wear and tear on the USB port because it's just mag a MagSafe charger. I don't have to worry about data. It just works. So I do have a Qi charger in my car. So it, it was really, it's really great to be able to take my phone. Actually, it, it, it's built into the car. Um, so I was able to, you know, take my phone and stick it in there and it'll just charge and everything just works. And that was great. But then I made a mistake. I decided for the first time when I got my new iPhone, I got the Max, mm -hmm. and now it doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's that is the problem. My phone doesn't fit in the little cubby hole in my wife's car either. So I just yeah. I throw it in a cup holder, and it cuts down one cup holder, but oh well. So like mine, I have the the what is this S twenty right? So mm -hmm. I can I have to kind of like slide it in because mine's in the center console, the the wireless charger. But 
what I noticed, because I have the charging cord coming out of the center console so Kim can can charge her phone. And I, well, we took a road trip. I put mine on the wireless charger. What I noticed is it gets very hot. It does. So, get, like, it can get when a I go warm. up to Maine, I don't know if I'm going to use the wireless charger or not. I mean, I don't know if there's a way I can turn it off and just hook it up by a USB in there, but I, I got to look at that. Yeah, yeah wireless, wireless charging... charging can get a little bit warm depending upon yeah. if it's fast wireless charge, slow wireless charge. It's, um, and then, you know, is it in a confined space, like a little cubby <laughs> stuff like that? So, yeah. Uh, but, but no, it, I mean, it's, it, it works pretty well. So I've, I've, I've been really happy with it. And Colin, uh, shoot me the link for what you got for CarPlay. Cause I've been talking to my wife and I'm like, you need this because you, you keep complaining about the wire that you constantly have to plug in. So I've been trying to find a CarPlay equivalent of the Motorola one, and Motorola doesn't make a CarPlay one. Now, Carlin also makes one for um, – does both, actually. Oh. So if you want to put the one that has both on her car, then you can have it either way. That would be ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Send me that. All right. So, um, you know, a little bit uh, – we'll do, we'll do a little bit of an update, uh, just a little bit of a sad update, and then we'll move on. But I ended up having to put one of my dogs down this last weekend. Um, you know, 16-year-old Beagle was just at the end. Um, and it was just a humane thing to do. And, you know, it's it's always sad when that happens. But she had a good long life. Um, she didn't deserve to be in pain anymore. And so now we're we're moving on. It's been a very rough weekend. And, um, you know, and unfortunately, uh, Mike knows this, uh, in a house, when you have a house full of elderly dogs, un unfortunately, when one goes, uh, others are going to follow fairly shortly. And so, you know, we've got at least one, if not two more that probably won't make it to winter. Um, so we're just, you know, enjoying the days that we have left. And yeah, it's uh, been quite a year. So, you know, so uh you know we'll we'll see how that goes and uh my wife's already said when these are gone we're not going to be long without another dog but we will not do four at one time again she said we will leave that to mike and kim uh to deal with on yeah, in their house <laughs> we are uh so on a related note um not us personally but uh, Kim's dad lost his Yorkie yesterday, um, and that was his last dog. He pretty much said that, you know, no more dogs after that. Um, last Saturday, Kim and I went out to an event in Pennsylvania, which was Puppy Mill Awareness Day, which was from the rescue that we adopted our Tucker from. And while we're there, the folks we adopted Tucker from are like, so are you thinking about adopted another one or and Kim's like, yeah, you know, what, what, what kind of, uh, well, either, you know, a lab or a golden or a Yorkie. Cause you know, we, we haven't had a Yorkie in the house for a couple of years now. And next thing we know about an hour later, they're like, okay, we'll be back. What, 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 what how are you going? They come, they went and I guess I got a phone call, 19 week old golden retriever. Mm. That they, they were trying to send us home with now <laughs> half, half serious, half joking, yeah. mm -hmm. right? There was no ill will about, it. we were like, we can't take a dog home just out of the blue like this. We were nowhere near prep. This dog has not seen a vet. We don't know if this dog is going to get along with our dogs. And this, this dog was literally, he was right out of the mill. Mm. If it, I will admit that if it was up to me and logic hadn't kicked in, I pro we probably would have brought him home because that dog bonded with me almost instantly. It's very rare that the rescue dogs bond uh, gravitate to, to males over females, but this one gravitated to me over all the females that were there. So that would have been my boy. Mm -hmm. uh, but Yeah. 
Yeah, so we have been so so my wife, you know, not that she's looking forward to the other dogs passing away, but she has been, you know, she's like, We're getting a shih tzu next. We're getting a shih tzu next. And I'm like, I don't want a freaking shih tzu. <laughs> she had a shih tzu before. She loved the shih tzu. His name was Bo. I'm like, I don't want a freaking shih tzu next. <sighs> I have a shih tzu. I mean I she's want... part shih tzu, part chihuahua, but I'm like, I don't I don't want a damn shih tzu. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, not that I necessarily, she's like, I'm like two dogs max. And she goes, I was thinking one dog. And I'm like, wow, I really thought I'd have to sell one dog only more, but I really don't want just a Shih Tzu either. So do I deal with just no. one dog or do I deal with no. two dogs and get a dog that I want? No, uh, you gotta have so. two. This way they, 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 they keep each other occupied while you're. Yeah. So, but my requirements are... Otherwise, if you have one, it's going to be Velcro to one of you. Uh, it'll be her. Trust me. It'll be her. It won't be me. Uh, okay. So, so uh, but, you know, I'm like, ah, damn it. Now I'm going to end up with two dogs. And two dogs is a lot more to get taken care of when you want to go somewhere. So... Well, and that's true. That's, <laughs> you know, point two. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so, yeah, so we're just, you know... Like I said, it, it's it's been it's been really tough, but on the plus side, got a new grandbaby. That's still a bit on the DL, but now got a new brink grandbaby. It's not on the DL now. It's out there. Nobody listens PTR to the show. PTR Radio Land, man. It's out there. So, uh, so anyway, um, so yeah, so you know that that's good. Although that means that we had the grandkids this weekend. Which didn't do much for my headaches, uh, but you know. Uh. So, I, I... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I, was, I was looking up the different types of Shih Tzu. I came up with this. I, I, I'm going to post this. This is just. You, you know, you get these sites that are obviously automatically generated, trying to get your ads. Mm-hmm. This particular one. <laughs> that just says add 300 by 250. So this one. So here. Look, they have space for an ad. Advertise yeah. here. But no, is he going down to see the pictures of the different types of Shih Tzus? You gotta scroll All down. right. This is not a Shih Tzu. <laughs> Nor is this. Oh my god. Not sure that is either. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. But I don't think so. No. So. All right, so speaking of kids. Yeah. You having some Mike? I, I, you got one on the way? No. You, we, no. We're going to plan a baby shower? Ain't got kids. No plans to have kids. Never had kids. That you Somehow, know of. sitting here Friday, was it Friday? Uh, let me make sure about the day on this one because, uh, you know, I have the uh, sitting here at work, and it must have been Friday. It was the 22nd. 22nd. Thursday. I'm sorry. Thursday. Even better. I'm sitting here Thursday, and all of a sudden I'm like, um, What? Kim's like, what's the matter? I said, you remember the neighbors had the birthday party and um, we were talking to the friends and one guy was like a teacher at the at the elementary school here in town and he's got put in charge of fundraising. And I said, well, if you do a bingo again or something like that, you know, let me know. I'll help you out. And But somehow that translated to, hey, are you still available for the back to school barbecue on the 27th? I'm looking, I'm like, new phone, who this? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I am DJing Wednesday night a back-to-school barbecue for the kindergarten through third grade school. Oh, yes. I'm like, you know, I could just throw, like, plug my phone in and stream... Baby Kids shark bop off for of Sirius XM. Oh, let's see here. Listen, babe, Baby Shark is in my playlist, by the way. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. It's in there. 
I'm going to see here. School Dance 2022 exclusive songs for DJs. Let me see. Okay, so Post Malone, I Like You, a happier song. You should play that one. Uh, Lizzo, To Be Loved, Am I Ready? I'm sure the kids will, will, will bop to that one. Uh, Doja Cat, Vegas. That seems like a good one for the, for the kindergartners. Um, young oh, well, Gravy. No, it's not just the... Betty, okay, get your money. It is not just the kids. It's the parents, too. So I have some Rolling Stones. I, 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 there's a radio station by us that their slogan is Today's <clears throat> Hits, Yesterday's Favorites. Uh-huh. That is what I'm going for. So I literally sat there and listened to them for a couple of hours and, and grabbed the songs out of my library as I heard them on this station. Kids, Bob. I wonder if the there it is. At, <gasps> oh, it, my God. What? There is a Kids, Bob version of WAP. Um, yeah. There's. You have no idea how crazy Kids, Bob has gotten. I told you, they had the neighbors had a party like a few months before the birthday party, and you know our backyards are next to each other. I'm out there at my grill, and they got the music playing, and I'm cooking, and I find myself rocking out like what you know about rolling down in the deep, and then all of a sudden I realize this is kids bop I'm rocking out to. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, evidently, there's also a parody that talks about wings and pizza. Yes, yes. All right, I had I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I may have to break this out next time somebody asks for WAP. I said, "Oh yeah, I got WAP. Wings and pizza. That may have you know to, what? Those that may are have the, to happen. Those are the kinds of versions that you want to use during under the covers when you do trivia." That's true. That's true. And I have I may I I have at least one trivia night coming up. They did they I got a heads up that it is going to happen. Uh so, you know, looking forward to that one. And then I I actually got asked to DJ a Halloween trunk or treat, Mike. So you're not the only one getting back out there spinning the tunes. So, you know, like you I have to pick kid-friendly things, so Monster Mash, Adam's Family Groove, uh, you know, the Batman theme song. I have, I do have some other, like Halloween. I have a Halloween playlist as well that I can. Send. But see, you don't, you don't, you don't need like club dance type. No, I don't. I don't. These songs. So. I don't wiki wiki. No. No, I don't. I don't wiki. I don't. I don't do the wiki wiki like you do. You do the wiki wiki stuff. I do a little bit of the wiki wiki. No, I I do the I do the radio thing where but, we slide from one into the other. You know. But I did. I you know. I I will. I I love pranking folks yeah. when I'm when I'm DJing. Like uh, they're sitting there rocking out, and all of a sudden you cut in and to what does the fox say? I think we're or I think we're alone now. You should just throw that one. Uh, in. Throw throw some retros in there, Mike, from our time. Oh, I did. I you know? did. I got some in sync. Oh, that's not our time, Mike. Throw in like locomotion. All I gotta do is put on Jive Bunny and to- the Master Mixers, to- and, to- and then, roll. then I just stand there behind my screen, looking like. I bet you could throw in I'm pushing <laughs> buttons like Paris Hilton. I bet you could throw in Tootsie Roll and it would work, you know? <laughs> I don't, I, look, I'm bringing, I'm bringing a backup drive of my DJ library just in case, you know, they, they ask me for stuff, you know, I got clean versions of everything. That's the other thing. Yes. Thank God everything is labeled clean or intro clean and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh. Boy, I I've been burned a couple times by songs where you didn't where you wouldn't think, like Werewolves of London. I think has a curse word in it somewhere, and uh, you know a, a couple other ones that you would think, okay, these are deep cuts. So you you wouldn't think that, or not deep cuts, but they're classics. So you wouldn't think they'd have them in mm-hmm. there, but they do. 
So yeah. Yeah, you know, I made sure I made sure I had the cha-cha slide, the electric slide, and you know. Cupid uh, shuffle. I don't know if kids know the Macarena. Macarena's good. Uh, you, uh, what about the? Um... No, if they if you ask me about like chicken dance or the hokey pokey, listen, I still. You still don't want to do I those. I still twitch. I still twitch when they come on. I can't. I will have. I'll have Cotton, a damn. You got the Cotton Eye Joe. Of a damn aneurysm. No, I, but I should put that in there. That's that's a, that's a good call. You know, um, I think I got Boot Scoot and Boogie in there just in case. Maybe Achy Breaky Heart just in case. A dubstep remix of Baby Shark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's not a dubstep remix, but it, it's got a little bit of an intro club beat to it. I, to remember and those. yes, I have mixed that in before. Mixed that in. The friend had a Christmas in July party, and in the middle of like this deep trance, all of a sudden it cuts to Juju, baby shark, do, 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 and everybody just went. <laughs> and then one, the one person who who who's actually a, a, a stripper, I have no idea where. She actually looks at me and she goes, "Did you put this in because it's Shark Week?" Yes. Why? Yes, I did. And thank you for noticing. <laughs> yeah, there's. Some now, decent... Excuse me while I drink this tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some decent like. Um, God, I can't remember what though. There, there, I can't remember who who did it, but oh. there was there's some really decent like heavy metal remixes. Okay, so. What a kids, what kids bop. bop is? Okay, what? I don't know if we could play it without. No, we can't without getting. But but kids bop is basically, and, yeah. uh, kids kids bop is I'm a, extremely sanitized, uh, like versions of songs. So not only do they sanitize the lyrics, but they soften up the music. They get kids to actually sing it. It's it's like a children's karaoke version. You know that's the best way to explain. Yeah. It. Okay, here, here, here's a way, another way you can think about it, because you know he's Cisco's from our generation, so he, he think about back in the day, Kids Incorporated, right? Mm-hmm. And they, they, they were in the band, and they would sing every episode. They'd sing like a popular song, like from the radio, or yeah. if you want, or, or current version. Think Glee. about if Glee took place in grade school. Yeah. And their ver- their versions, that's kids bop. Yeah. That that's all it is. But it's but it's like we're up to like it's it's like uh, <clears throat> um uh what is that? What's the other what's the the like not now. Uh now uh, that's what I call music. Yeah, now that's what I call it's a, like they're up to like I don't know version 57 or something on kids bop. It's ridiculous. You know, uh, if you have Sirius XM, you can go to channel 79. That is Kids Bop Radio. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. Um, so, yeah. But that and that, by the way, that is awesome. If you're just hooking up to a speaker to play music at a kid's party. That's exactly what I did for the neighbors next door. Didn't have to worry about a playlist or nothing. And when it came time for happy birthday, I could just control it from my phone. Yeah. Awesome. So, but no. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's, it's good to get back out there and do a bit of DJing again. Um, you know, get the, get the rigs, dust the, uh, uh, blow the dust off the rigs and get them back out there again. And it'll be nice for me because I'll have, you know, I've got a couple of nice, reliable laptops now, so I don't have to worry about it. You know, I've got yeah, the MacBook Air, your, um, and I've got the and I've got the the White Book, the Intel White Book, and they've both been working really nice, actually. So, been I actually been taking the MacBook Air to work because it'll last the whole day without ever having to be plugged in. Really? Yeah, just I mean, I can do eight hours of note taking on it without any problems. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I can I can run Slack and Teams and, you know, not have any issues and just basically use it like another monitor and, you know, yep. or run. Uh, I, I get the same with, uh, you know, I mean, just my, my Surface Pro uh, X here yep. or 10 or 
So yeah, I just okay. okay. So while we are talking about computers, I did yeah. pose a question to you, gents, and I kind of threw, I'm throwing you on 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 the hot seat here, trying to help me out yeah. here. So I you, need you have to a replace a computer in this house. I have a conundrum. You do, and and this is all because business is booming. So and here's your issue, though. You're coming in at a very bad time. Well, I'm a good in at a horrible time. Good and a bad time. So in so. AMD is launching their new processors. Okay, mm -hmm. and their new processors look amazing. All right, as far as clock speeds. The lowest tier AMD processor is within a percentage performance of the highest tier current gen Intel processor. All right, for gaming. Now, I know you're not going to use it for gaming. But that just gives you an idea of its performance, all right? Yeah. But that's going to come with uh, inventory issues and price issues, okay? However, if you don't need to be bleeding edge, newest stuff, all right, then you've got a really good deal on previous gen AMD stuff, which is still ridiculously good tons of cores and threads for really cheap high availability of motherboards processors memory um you know for a really good discount because they're trying to clear the shelves you know and then if you want to go team blue all right well, intel's trying to compete so they're trying to cut costs so they're trying to cut the skew numbers now I will tell you, Intel's got their 12th gen stuff out there, but I'm rocking in two different machines, 10, 8, 50 Ks. All right. That's 12 core, 24 threads. That's more than I'm ever going to need and more than, 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 you know, Mrs. Eight man will ever need. Uh, and they were so, really cheap and they're, they're two generations so old at this point, but who cares? So, and yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. Like, processor wise, I'm not as concerned. If it's a couple gens older for, or whatever, fine. I'm not loyal. Team red, team blue, whatever. The the points that I made to you to you guys, the challenge was the price range, which I got two machines that are on the table right now that are around 500 bucks that are pre-built, and the the video processing. With, and the reason I threw that out there, this is being driven by usage of Photoshop. And Intel dedicated graphics or integrated graphics do not support the latest versions of Photoshop. They, they don't uh, support acceleration, no. Definitely not. And so, so you'd be leaning that's on where... Uh, now, I am not a, now. One of your options had an i3. With I am not a huge fan of the i3s. I I steer clear of them. I go minimum i5. I see the i3 as the economy. All right, and and it's for the person who's only going to do web browsing and email. Okay. All right. I just I don't see that being a powerhouse. I I it will have issues. All right. Yeah, I think you'll get complaints about the snappiness of it. Now, the other one you're looking at, I think you'll run into issues with the, well, I think both of them you'll probably end up having to upgrade the memory. Because 8 gigs is not as much as it used to be. Yeah. I would go Agreed. with 16 with the minimum. Um, the, the second one you gave us, which is the Ryzen 5 5600G. Now, 5600G is a mobile processor, if I remember correctly. I, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. But I would bet both of these machines are really ITX boards in a big case. Mm-hmm. Um, cause that's what, and, and they could even be laptop boards in a PC case. I have seen no, so 50, much of that now. A, 
5600G is a six core, 12 thread desktop processor. Okay, because the. Because let me look here. And we're really so, geeking out right now, yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I think there you'll run into issues with hard drive space. 256 SSD is not very big at all. Okay. Hard drive space, I'm not concerned about. 99% of her stuff. She keeps on Dropbox because she works on multiple okay. multiple machines. Uh, and I will, I can easily it's, add. Yeah. So, uh, but Ray, I don't know how, I, I am not a huge fan of Radeon graphics either. I am like you. I, I prefer NVIDIA just simply because it's more optimized in most of uh, the applications. Yeah. Now, the one thing that I did find out as I was looking today is that particular HP that I, if you look up that model number on Walmart, from the Walmart page, you look up that specific model number, that card was, that model number was supposed to come with a 1060 Super. And I guess Walmart swapped it out and is now a 5500. Well, a 1060 RX Super would be a pretty old card at this point. But for what she's looking to use it for, it is well well within the requirements, well within the need. Uh, yeah, potentially. I mean, I, I think a sixteen fifty would beat a ten six. Oh wait, maybe it was a sixteen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe it was. Uh, I would think you're it right would be now a that I'm thinking about that. Because a ten sixty would be like four generations old. You're right, because I, yeah, that's... I mean, they came out with the 1,600 cards the same time that they came out with the 3,000 line of cards, I believe. I don't think they came out at the same time as the 2,000 line of cards. Do you know, Colin? Uh, 1650 Super, I'm sorry. Okay, 1650 Super. Okay, so a 1650 Super is a lot closer to, uh, like, a 1660. Um, so that would be good. Um because a 1660 is equivalent to a 1070-ish, maybe? I don't know. Uh, so, but general RTS. graphics cards are coming down Yeah. Uh, since er, since everything blew up in um, the in crypto, crypto world. So. How, however, I would, I, would, I would hesitate to tell you that you could easily upgrade the graphics cards in either one of these machines because... Yeah. My bet is these are going to be either proprietary power supplies or ITX power supplies where you're going to be limited in your wattage. So don't expect to be able to upgrade either easily to anything bigger um, than like something that would require maybe an 8-pin. So like a, a 2070 maybe, something like that. Um, I don't think you're going to – I mean you're not going to fit any 3080 Ti or anything like that in here. So okay, I, I so if she's getting into that. competitive, you know, gaming, they, this is not going to be the rig <laughs> for her, uh, you know. But uh, but I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, it, I would say it. Uh, I have to look at the specs a little bit more because you know, I have seen so many of these things that are just basically laptops, and yeah. I, I just get so irked about it. Because a lot of these end up just, I mean, they're laptop boards in a damn, and I know these may not be, um, you know, and it doesn't look like maybe this is. But, okay, so the power supply wattage in the one from Best Buy is a 350-watt power supply. That is, there are bricks that supply more to laptops than that is. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it, it tells you about how hard that machine can be pushed. Um, you know, and I think that the, the HP is going to be pretty similar. Um, I was looking for it and I thought I just saw it, but I guess I didn't. Um, so anyway, I mean, there's a, it's always a trade-off, always a trade-off of what needs to be done there. But at least you would be getting into kind of current gen ish chips. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I was perfectly, I was, I was ecstatic about my purchase about my the last 10850k that i got because i got the 
I got the memory, I got the board, and I got the chip for 350 bucks. And that was redonkulous of a good deal. Uh, luckily, I had an extra case, or I, I was I was already planning on buying a different case, and uh, I already had some extra parts, so it wasn't a big deal for me. But uh, yeah, so that uh, total geek out though, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot, a lot of options out there, and so Colin just messaged me one, and. Trying to find specifics on the. That was just the one that popped up that was about the same price that at least had. Well, it's a Ryzen 5 5600G. With 16 gigs. Um, 16 gigs of memory. Gig, a bigger hard drive. It's probably more standardized. And, yeah. I mean. So that, that has. Of that's course. Integrate, that's. Th- that's built in graphics. Um, yeah. I mean, I could add in a graphics card, but that's below the threshold for Photoshop. Yeah. Now, the, a, a the, lot the of flip it... side to all of this is she was running the latest version, which is 23. Good Lord. I rolled her back to 22 to see if that solves the issue. And we haven't quite gotten there yet. So if she has to go back, a, a, it's one nice thing about the subscription service is, that, you know, you can roll back a version or two if you need to. Yeah. It's, it's not a problem. So hopefully well, that would be the best bet because then I can wait and ride this out and see what ha- comes around on Black Friday when people are trying to, you know, when hopefully these prices come down a little more. Yeah. Well, I think tomorrow's when the new processors from AMD actually show up on the stores. So it might be interesting to see what actually happens. I mean, really, I think, you know, if you if you really loved your wife, this is what you'd get her. I mean, it's a Cougar Zumwalt Don't you do it. gaming Don't you behemoth. Do it. Um, Don't you? You know, it's... You know, like, I was even, I was even shocked because I started looking at some of the nukes some of like the the higher end nukes and they're all running intel integrated well yeah a nuke doesn't have the room for a dedicated nvidia unless you're talking yeah. about a laptop nvidia and then you're you're still talking the skull canyon and stuff like that so i'll tell you what i'll get this and she can have my tower that will run yeah oh, so well it, and that I, was the other thing so a full size tower is out of the question because it takes up too much room well she's a bit Specific. We'll call it that word. Specific. Yeah. She has specifications. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use that from now on you should have seen, to tell my wife. You, You're being you, very specific. You should have seen the look on her face when, no, dude, never upgrade from the Commodore 64. Trust me. Never. Dude. No, you should have seen the look on her face when I told her that your cheapest option may be a refurbished Mac Mini. She said, I ain't learning Mac. <laughs> so what I had sent Mike was a uh, a Zumwalt Gaming Bohemoth RTX 3090 Ti 24 gig i9-12900K with 8 terabytes of NVMe storage, 128 gigs of RAM, 20 terabyte hard drive with water cooling. And it looks like a fairly substantial RGB because that makes it go faster. <laughs> well, RGB is... RGB to computers is like decals on a on a Civic. It's that, like that's instant horsepower boost. It's like the flaming chicken, you know, yes, on the on flaming a chicken, you know. Uh, <clears throat> which that was another thing I got from the from the deal store was I got some uh, some more Gobi a flaming LED, chicken. No Gobi Gobi uh, RGB strips. So. Oh. I gotta figure uh, out. I got all these damn get, RGB strips. I gotta figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with them. I don't, don't ask you, me why I've get, been collecting um, them, but I've been collecting them. So did you, did you get um, did you did you get the Nyquil chicken? No, I didn't get the Nyquil chicken. And I actually had I, I had a discussion with my uh, oldest grandson, uh, you know, who's into the TikToks and the and 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 the Instas and all that stuff. 
Um, and I, I told him, I'm like, you know, when you have your Dungeons and Dragons night and it's your time to cook, um, don't make sleepy time chip chicken. You're not you're you're not supposed to, you know, make make the Nyquil marinated chicken. <laughs> and oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really sad that we have to tell people this. That you, you, you know, what? no, no, Nyquil no. is really not sad, a chicken marinade. What's really sad is that we are telling people not to do this because the people that are doing this. They should be having NyQuil marinated chicken with a side salad complete with Tide Pod croutons. Uh, okay? Just true. get it over with here because Darwinism is a thing, folks. And this may be the solution. I mean, here I'll, I'll show people what this, this, this recipe we're talking about. Uh, the, the, but this is the best part. Yeah, the well, the best part about all of this, you know, is the older folks who are in the conspiracy land saying that the Chinese who run TikTok want this to happen because COVID didn't work as well as they thought, so they're taking over through TikTok. And I'm like, dude, it's a bunch of people doing the same dance to the same soundbite and people watching other people doing stupid shit and reacting to it. Oh, God. The, the conspiracy theories and the news from both sides, I will not say from one side or the other, from both sides, is getting to be a bit much. Hang uh, on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang yes. on. I just got us 10,000 listeners with my mind. Oh! I thought about it, so it happened. <laughs> Hot damn. Hot damn. So, uh, you know, it's just, it is, it, it's insane. Uh, if, if you'd have told me 10 years ago, hey, you know what? People are going to wonder if something you say is true, even if it's backed up by real, tangible facts scientific evidence and and true statements by multiple people and agencies and everything else and you have video proof people are going to say it's not real what what why how we have evidence of someone doing something on video and somebody's going to say that didn't happen and a bunch of people are going to believe them and what how? How is that? I don't get it. Oh, we're going to have to have Maury have a show and you know, reveal everything to everybody for it to be believed. Maury's going to have to come out and say, you are the father. You did lie. You did <laughs> steal these things. Yeah, well, he retired it isn't. too, so he can't. Well, we'll have to bring him back. We'll have to have him and Jerry Springer and Rosie O'Donnell and Can Ricky Lake, and they're all going to have to be panel specialists. No. You on a left new out, TV you show left, you called left Real out, Facts. You left out and Geraldo Rivera, the most important one. Mm -mm. Sally, and, Jesse, Raphael. And Judge Judy and Judge Joe Brown and Judge Wapner and Wilford Brimley and... We're going to have to also get uh, uh, downtown Judge Julie Harry's Brown. Daughter. Yes. It sounds like you're yeah. casting Granddaddy Daycare 2. Oh, God. You We're going to talk about that here in a sec. You. Yeah, we are going to talk about that. But first, oh, but first, since we ventured into the realm of justice, let's talk about how, you know... They have curtailed the crime-stopping power of one of the greatest teams in all of the land. Better than the CIA, better than the FBI, better than the NSA, better than the LAPD. We're talking about 
the Scooby-Doo gang. That's right. They have had their thumb put on them. And Velma you know, has been persecuted. Uh, of course. Why, why not Daphne? Why just Velma? No, nah, the pretty white girl don't get touched. No, nah, just the see, nerdy ooh, girl from see, nerdy you know girl what? from the trash. Gotta, That's it. I'm, pretty, I'll be listening. The pretty rich white girl, she can do whatever in the hell she wants. That's the way it works. See, that's messed up. You know, pretty rich white girl gets away with everything. <laughs> the effeminate, you know, sports jock, he can do whatever in the hell he wants, wearing his damn, you know, cravats. And the stoner, well, nobody pays attention to him anyway. But it's the intelligent, low-class, white girl, wears glasses, and nobody pays attention to. She is the one that they say is, you know, mischaracterizing people. Uh, <clears throat> in an online video game, Velma has had her ability to call the police on certain characters revoked well, I Such, thought it was I, I thought they just replaced it completely with a different ability so she has uh, been dubbed a Karen so uh, yes they changed her powers uh, but she used to be able to call the police on anyone that she wanted you know and it's not her fault that the people controlling her would call the police mostly on black people. You know, uh, she pr she's probably the type of woman that puts raisins in her potato salad while you're at it. I mean, she could be. Just, I mean, she might be. <sighs> but yeah, I, I cannot believe that. Okay, so this is okay. Are these the same people? Do do these people like? Have they ever seen like Grand Theft Auto? Uh, these Any are the same people names? that said that an M and M can't wear pumps, Mike. That's what these people are. Are these the same people that sat in the forest crying because trees got cut down? Yes, it is. You know, so they've gone from analog to digital, is what you're telling me. Yeah. I just don't. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I so I, my stupid question here is: Are they the only ones that are like? Did she only call police on black characters, or could was that just her power to call the police? Uh, I I don't I don't I that can't be her only power, can it? Uh, I mean, it was like her, well, but, but yes, it's, it's for all characters. It was okay, for all characters. So, they just you know. The problem was a lot of no. the real people in the game happened to be black because there was a bunch of like NBA players and stuff. He who oh, vibes um, wrote on Twitter, I'm enjoying Velma in multiverses, but maining a character whose special move is calling the police on her enemies definitely don't sit right with me as a black man. Well, what the hell else is her special character going to be? Losing her glasses? I mean, she that's what she do. That she could yell jinkies. But I don't know what else. Jinkies. That could be like that she yells jinkies and turns into Mecha Velma? She-Hulk. Mecha Velma. Mecha Mecha Velma. I like it. So, okay, so did you see what they replaced it with? Instead of calling the police, Velma now solves the mystery and calls the Mystery Ink Gang and the Mystery Machine to take the bad guys away. So she's turned into a vigilante, is what she's turned into. Yes. Now but she's, I, I would rather see the Mystery Machine than some cops. Anyways. Now she's just completely abducting people. They are literally <laughs> false imprisonment of people. So this isn't any better. Now they are the KKK yeah. rounding people up in vans. 
Oh my God! Oh, wow. Uh, the, the, can we? You, you had a game, right? Do you want to play? I, I feel like we're getting a little too far into territory to go and get us canceled. You got a game? You well, play. we were yeah. we were correcting the correction, Mike. That's what we were doing. Yeah, we got a game okay. we can play. All right. So uh, this is a game that requires a letter. So I'm going to give you eight things and sixty seconds. Um. Eight things in sixty seconds. What? Yep, we're gonna we're gonna get a sixty second timer, and and I'm gonna give you eight things that you have to, uh, you know, name that start with the letter, and you are going to pick the letter, Mike. Oh. Okay. So. Okay. I have and, my random letter picker wheel thing going here. We're spinning. Okay, so. All right, so Colin, you got a piece is, of paper? Yeah. All right. So can, I will, can you explain again, though? So I'm gonna read. A, we're gonna so, get sixty seconds. You're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna read yeah. a thing. Uh huh. Mike's gonna tell us a letter. I'm gonna read okay. a thing. I'm gonna okay. read a thing, and then we'll have sixty seconds to go through this list of eight things. All right, and let's see here. Uh, play this quick-witted game with friends for a good laugh. Draw a card to set the topic, and then roll a die with the letter, which your responses must begin with. As you race against time, your answers will get a little outrageous and a little off-topic. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, and that's uh, each player needs blah blah blah. Make sure each player has. Youngest player rolls a slum at the top, flips it to the top, write up to two answers for each topic. I don't think we'll get two. We'll just do one. Answers must begin. When time runs out, all answers, all players must stop writing their answers and show how brilliant they are. Starting with the player who rolled the dice, everyone takes turns reading their answers aloud one topic at a time. This is your time to fight for your answer. Some answers might be more creative and require a bit more explanation all the topics have an infinite number of correct answers, so get ready to sell your heart out. Ultimately, your peers are the judge. If they vote to reject your answer, then sorry, Charlie, better luck next time. If two players have the same answer to a topic, they cancel each other out. Keep count of your accepted answers. Each round, the player with the highest number of correct answers wins the round. Okay? So, sure. basically, we're trying not to match. <laughs> And okay. you're trying to come up with an answer that actually makes sense. So if you come up with, so okay. if if the if the if the question if, if the letter's T and the question is, what is the best war weapon? And you write tacos. All right, that is not a good answer. All right, and and unless you can somehow come up with some type of wartime taco that really makes sense, uh, then it is going to get rejected, and you will not get a point. Having uh, an enemy okay. with a corn allergy. All right. Okay. So, so that's that's how this works. All right. Okay. So, but kids, here, kids, listen to me. This is this is a this is a advice from your uncle Mike. If you ever have a game like this that you're playing against somebody and they show up at the table and they sit there and they have to unscrew their pen and screw it back in, just walk away. They're hustling <laughs> you. Just walk away. All right. <laughs> So, Mike, what is what like was the, the dude that shows up at the pool? That's like Uncle Phil showing up at the pool hall wearing a trench coat and like, yeah, I'll play. Well, that's a pool stick. Yeah, and, okay. And these are one-word answers. See, all right, see, these, look are, at, these are these fountain are fountain pen. Not, oh yeah, you are gonna die? I'm gonna lose. These are these are one-word one-word answers. answers. One-word okay. answers. All right. All right. Not, Letter is E. Letter is E. All right. Uh, all right. Sixty seconds starting. Uh, let's see here. Now, all right. Uh, word to describe your grandmother. All right. Number two. Nothing is better than blank in the middle of the night. Number three. Things you do while you're procrastinating. Number four. Blank me if you can. Number five, conversation killers. Number six, flexible things. 
Number seven. Presidents, first or last name? Uh, number eight. Things they should have taught in school. And time. All right. So, number one, words to describe your grandma. I said extra. Colin, what'd you say? I didn't write anything. I was writing the things. I didn't realize because I couldn't think of an E. All right, Mike, if my you... grandmothers, Go. if either of my grandmothers were dead, I would have said earthbound. I guess it's a hyphenated word, but it's one word. All right, Mike, what'd you say? Uh, so I said, I said elderly, but I, my my first thought was to write down easy, which <laughs> ain't respectful to grandma. Oh, well, and but, make, yeah, I wrote you, elderly. I would have made you sell easily, easy, easy. I would have made you say how your grandma was was loose and fast. Uh, all right, so I, I I think we both get that one. All right. Uh, next one. Nothing is better than blank in the middle of the night. Colin? I, I, I blanked. I had no idea. I, I could not think of an E. Mike? Well, you get up and you're hungry. So you go to the kitchen and you grab yourself an Eggo waffle. <laughs> I said... Nice. I said evacuation, as in like peeing. <laughs> All right. Point for both of us. Yeah, good job. All right. Number three, things you do while you're procrastinating. Colin? Uh, okay, this is probably going to match. I, I was, eat. I said eat. Mike, what'd you say? I say eat boogers. All right, uh, that it matters. But I know it's supposed to be one word answer. Actually, no, I had nothing. But I'm just <laughs> sitting here thinking about it. I was like, well, I'm just going to try and fill in something to be stupid. All right, you uh, guys both matched anyway, so whatever. Number four, blank me if you can, Mike. Eat. Uh, that's what I had to. Ed Colin... Educate. <laughs> educate. Oh, Colin, it was a point. Colin that's gets a good a point. one. All right, number five, conversation killers. I put envy. Colin? I, I, I blanked that one, too. Mike? I had trouble with E. Yeah, yeah horrible letter. So, beings that I've been kind of chatting back and forth with my man Cisco, and I know he's a Tampa Bay fan, I know that if I was talking to him and I said Eagles, meaning Eagles, meaning the Philadelphia Eagles, that the conversation would just end. Because you can't respect somebody who roots for the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> I'll give you that point. I will give you that point. All right. Uh, flexible things. Earthworms. Earth, my, I call it put earthworms. All right. They are flexible. I will give you that one. Mike, what you put? All right, I put elastic. <laughs> Did you put erections, Mike? No. I put European whores. <laughs> That's, two, That's words. two words. You fail. No point for Mike. <laughs> point for point for Colin and Chris. All right. Uh, presidents, first or last names? Who started with E? How many people put Eisenhower? Because I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Things they should have taught in school. I put everything. Yep, that's what I put too. All right. So no point there. Colin, what'd you put? Anything? No. Nah. All right. You I, didn't even put economics? You they know? did teach economics. Well, I it was, was a mandatory like, class. Well, I. Uh, all right. Number two. All right. Okay. We're spinning. This thing spins a long time. If it comes up X, we're spinning again. 
or Y. <laughs> v. V. All right. Uh, this could be fun. Uh, <laughs> all right. Number two, starting. Blank made me do it. Uh, num number two, cities. Name a city. I think for that one you can get away with two words. Number three, terrible baby names. Number four, bad ideas for a tattoo. Uh, number five, things your mom was right about. Uh, number six, uh, I want my blank back. Number seven, hippie hobbies. And number eight, say hello to my little blank. All starting with the letter V. All right. Mike, we'll start off with you this time. Blank made me do it. Valentine. I put Velma. As in. I put Victor. Velma. <laughs> All right. Everybody gets a point. Cities. Number two. I put Victoria Falls. Ooh. I put Victoria without the falls. I don't know that Victoria is the name of a city. Yeah, it is. And I put okay. I put Victoria Capital, Ville. Actually. Victoriaville. Okay. Well, I think they're all different cities. I don't think we have to match there. Terrible. It's in Canada, Victoria, but that's it's still a city. It didn't say I know, a I'm US saying, that's, city. It's definitely a city. It's a city I've visited. All right. Terrible baby names. Colin? Faruka. Oh, that is a good one. Mike? He is Vigo. I put Vivian. Because it's one of those that they do both, you know, male and female, and I don't like it. All right. Uh, bad ideas for a tattoo. Colin? <laughs> Vagina. <laughs> okay, that is a bad idea for a tattoo. Mike, what'd you put? I put a Vespa. I put a vicar. As in a priest. So yes, we all get a point. So who wants a priest as their tattoo? That just seems silly. Alright, things your mom was right about. Let's start with V. Mike? Well, okay, so this one I put vagina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just keep in mind, I came from a single-parent household, so there was no male option for the birds and the bees for me. Okay. What exactly did she tell you about the vagina? Stay away from it? Never mind. PG, no. PG-13 show. All right. Colin? Values. Values. Oh, good ones. I put vasectomies. Okay, so I'm wondering why I'm getting all of these text messages. It's because Cisco's playing along with this here. So uh, I'm trying to. One, two. What are we on? Five? Uh, that was five, so, yes. Uh, uh, vegetables. Mom was right about vegetables. About eating your vegetables. That's a good. That's he, a good one. This may be the most logical one yet. Yes. All right, number six. I want my blank back. Colin, what'd you say? I I didn't come up with one for that one. 
Mike, what'd you have? I'd prefer if you went next. I said VHS tapes. That's two words. It is. Three, but, technically. Yeah. Mine, I'm not, I'm not proud of this one. It was just, you know, did you, did you this, this is vir- like one of those. Virginity. Yes, I did. And this is like one of those family feud answers where, you know, I, I not just trying to guess playing the odds here. All right, next. Cuz I really don't want that back, but No, no. No, nobody wants that back. Hippie hobbies. Now this one was hard. This one was very this... hard. Mike, what did uh or Colin, what'd you have? Vaping. Vaping. That is a good Vaping. hippie hobby. That is uh that makes perfect sense. It's not what I had. Mike, what'd you have? I didn't have I didn't have anything. I couldn't think of anything. I had vacationing. Cause they never work. So they're constantly vacationing. Now, I'm gonna debate this one though. Cause no, because it's not really a vacation. Because they still have to do stuff to get money. If it if it's a hundred percent all the time, is it really still a vacation? Well, I I'll, I'll admit your argument, and I will not take a point. All right, next one. Say hello to my little blank, Colin. Violin. That's what I said. Mike. My little villain. Ah, oh, you get a point. All right. So total up for the two rounds. I have seven. Mike, what'd you end up with? Ten. Colin. What'd you end up with? I think seven. I I I, I forgot to keep count in the okay. uh, third one. All right. Well, so Mama Blair has a very interesting question. What if you uh, wrote the same word for every answer and were able to defend it? Because, well, I guess that if you if you can defend it properly, then you know that works. I guess that works. So this is a game called Off Topic, and uh, so we did go a little bit long. We went like seventy seconds instead of sixty seconds, and I don't actually know what the what the timer is it might be 30 seconds but uh you know it's, a, it's one of my new games it's just uh just a little bit of fun so yeah not bad like i guess yeah, i was actually purposely not reusing words because if you could yeah. keep using the same word then that would be a bit boring i think it'd be like yeah. guessing or... a dollar every time on price is right nobody wants to be the one dollar I mean... douchebag no, you know. I because mean, honestly, if if that was the case, then I would have probably tried to just put vagina for all eight with V and tried to figure out how to defend it for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, think about it. Mm-hmm. say hello to my little vagina. It, yeah. it fits. Oh, that definitely mm-hmm. would have fit. Yeah, I would have been okay yeah. with that one. I would have given you the point for that. Is one. there it? My, the only one that it may not have worked is Victoria is Falls, a town. Yeah, I, I was actually vagina? I checked. No, there is not a town. There is a place called Vagina in in Russia. There are actually two towns. Yep. Uh, all right. So, um, you know what? I think we'll get to this a little early. Let's go ahead and. Let's get into our double feature movie review, or or actually, let's let's do this because I don't I know you guys won't won't have any. Um, well, you'll you'll have a reaction to this, but I don't know that you'll necessarily have a ton of input. Although, Mike, I don't know, maybe maybe you might have something. So, I was grabbed by this headline: "Father of Bride hop, stops halfway down an aisle to grab daughter's stepdad. Life is so much easier without the drama." Now, if I just said that headline, what comes into your mind? Because I actually asked this question at work because I ran into this article while I was on my lunch hour. And I'm like, 
I, I went into this story thinking, oh, it's, this belongs in like slash our trashy of Reddit is where this belongs because this is going to be a wedding brawl is what it's going to be. Oh, yeah, I thought, there was, I thought there was a fight involved for sure. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I assumed that he was halfway down the aisle, then decided to grab the stepdad and have him go and walk down the aisle with him. See, Colin, and that proves yeah. that you are an optimist, whereas Mike and I are definitely pessimists. No, you know? uh, or, it, or it proves, uh, well, it could, be, there are other correlations that could be derived here, Shag. I mean, we're both married. Yeah. So we, we've True. been there where we've, we've gone through and played out the whole worst case scenario, the day of our wedding, like my worst case scenario was that some long lost relative shows up. And when they say, does I anyone worry about... have any reason to object? Somebody's like, yeah, I do. I She's know. married you to ever... me. Have you ever been like biting your tongue at a wedding? Because when that part comes up, I, I've been to weddings where they purposely left that part out Ugh. because they knew half the half I, the church would stand up and be like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. I can't. I have, no. There's God a show, will not let me. There's a show on my rate on my sonar list that I just I, I wish somebody would repost it. And I, I just haven't gotten up the nerve to ask for people to repost it. My big redneck wedding. It used to be hosted by Tom Arnold and it was the trashiest of trash weddings. And it was the funnest thing in the world to watch. It was like my big gypsy wedding, but only for I was going to say my my gypsy wedding that, and then then you had my gypsy sisters. Yeah, but this was like mud bogs and dollar store wedding dresses, and I mean this was this was crazy, like it it was nuts. And then you had Tom Arnold popping up every once in a while, high on cocaine. Uh, you know, interjecting, giving his two cents into the wedding. So it was it was pretty awesome. So I really want to find that. But, um, you know, no, in, in this case, uh, Colin's, you know, dream actually happened, which I can't imagine happens all that often. It was the father of the bride stopped halfway down, and he reached out to the stepdad, and they both walked the woman down the rest of the aisle, which is, it's great that they have, a good relationship and that he wanted to share that yes. moment with him. It doesn't happen all that often. I, you know, I am a stepdad and I can tell you that I did not care for the boy's real dad because of what he did to my wife. All right. I would, you know, that it, it, no, that, or, and you know, my daughter, she has a stepdad, I would not invite him to walk her down the aisle. There's no way in hell that that would happen. All right. Um, and there's nothing against him. I don't have any animosity towards him at all. Uh, truth be known, I don't even know him. All right. Um, and that's part of the problem is he's just not a part of her life and that doesn't make it a, a priority. It's obvious that's not the case here where, you know, the guy knows that, that you know, that's not the case. And it's like, you know, my wife is a huge part of my daughter's life. And so, you know, if my daughter wanted my wife to walk her down the aisle, I would go, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense because my wife has been more a part of my daughter's life than my ex was. You know, it just, right. it's just the way that it is. And so it's, it's reassuring to see these types of things out there. And it's nice to see these things out there. But it's not the norm. It's like when I went for custody of my daughter, um, you know, the judge said to me, it's reassuring and refreshing to see a dad fighting for custody and fighting for more time with his kid. And, and you know, you're doing a really good thing. And to me, I just thought I'm doing what needs to be done. I'm doing what I should do. I'm not doing anything extra, you know, and it was, it was, it was nice of him to say that, but it wasn't, like I said, I didn't feel like I was doing anything extra or above and beyond or anything like that. I was just doing what I should do. And, um, you know, it's a sad thing that that is above and beyond. We have a lot of deadbeat dads out there and that pushes the, the bar down for all of us regular dads out there, you know, in, in the United States, um, 
father custody of children is about 35 percent um as opposed to like canada where it's closer to about 45 to 50 percent so you know dad's rights have a long way to go in this country and part of it's just because of the negative stereotype that we get because of the deadbeat dads out there um so like i said it's nice to see this dad this stepdad getting along and it was nice to see him doing this whether it was staged or not it doesn't matter um you know it makes perfect sense and like i said if my daughter said hey i want you know angie to help walk me down the aisle i go okay that makes perfect sense she helped raise you almost from the time you came home from the hospital so i wouldn't you know i wouldn't expect anything different in fact my my daughter's already told her boyfriend of you know nine years now hey you'll never meet my mom as far as i'm concerned my mom is angie who you've met a lot of times so you know it that it is what it is and um so it's it, like I said, it's refreshing to see these things. I don't know what you guys' take on it. I've I've kind of dominated the conversation yep. there, but you know, well, curious what you guys think. No, I think you said so, it well. So I do have a I do have a question for you, which mm-hmm. is you guys have seen many many more weddings than I have. Do they well, ever actually if, use the? If you'd let us hook you up on online dating, maybe we could see one more. So what do you mean? Do they us? ever actually use the, the line of about <laughs> <Sorry>. the? <laughs> None of the weddings I've actually been to use that line. I thought it was just a Hollywood line. What, the speak now or forever hold your peace? Yeah. Mine? It's more it in Catholic. In hours. It's more in Catholic ceremonies than, uh, and okay. maybe it's uh, maybe sense. it's like Roman Catholic ceremonies than even well, modern Catholic ceremonies. I was going to say, the times, the times that I do remember hearing it, were the wedding ceremonies that basically were like a full mass. And I yeah. could have been hallucinating at that point because that thing was like an hour and a half long in sitting in church on them hard ass pews. But yeah, you know, listen, any church goes out there, any Padres, whatever you want, but you want people to come to church, make the damn pews a little more comfortable, please. All right. Sitting on a, sitting on wood, with no cushion for how long? Uh, maybe that's a Jersey thing. I don't know. That's why but... you got to bring those seat cushions like you do to the baseball games and stuff. You know? Yeah, but the problem is that my the seat cushion I have to bring to the NASCAR games has like a, a drink bladder in it well, so that's... that I can sneak it. That's how I sneak in my liquor. Holy wine, my friend. Holy wine. Well... Okay. So, I but church no more. But anyway. no, no. I, I to, to but answer to your question, point, Colin, I no, think it's, it's, not, it, it's not terribly common anymore. Um, that's yeah. just like the the line uh, "obey" is a lot of times not included anymore in modern ceremonies. Mm-hmm. I tried. Oh, I tried so hard to get that word into our wedding vows. <laughs> I tried. You have no idea how hard I tried to get that in there. And it, it God damn, part, part of having a woman preacher that married us it, it just she was not having it like <laughs> she needed agreement did, from everybody did, did you want that in there or did, was it was it was was mrs eight man on board with it and and the no and the preacher mrs. Just eight didn't man want was 100 percent. <laughs> she mrs. was like eight i ain't gonna obey no it wasn't. Right. So, like that word no is not going to be in our wedding vows no way no how i'm like no god no no has to be in there I gotta get it in there somehow. <laughs> I gotta have one win. This is the only win I'm gonna have in this whole marriage. Let me have it. Uh, no, I okay, wouldn't so... let me have the. You wouldn't let me have the wrestling belt cummerbunds with the tuxedos. No. <laughs> no, I, I. It is. It is less and less in there, and um, you know, it, and and I understand. I mean, it's it's a it's a bit of an outdated. Ter- the sentiment is good the terminology is a bit outdated. Um, and that's what it comes down to, really. You okay, know. So we just have like two minutes before we get to the movie review. So I, I did want to review, not review, go over one thing that's happened in my life. Mm-hmm. So um, I left my previous employer of 16 years. Yep. And uh, switched to a new company, basically doing the same. I mean, I'm doing the same job. Oh, I thought maybe I just, you were going to say you I went... I thought maybe you were hmm? going to say you went full-time YouTube or something, and we didn't know. 
you know. So I was still doing the same job I was before, but I just was unable to continue doing the same job with my previous previous employer due to different contract things. But but here's the thing. So it was very mentally stressful to me um, to I do bet. this, and you know, going over you know things like I had a non compete. They're shaking the non compete at me. I know non competes are not worth the paper they're printed on, but you know, still, it, it was it was a it was it was a problem in my head. So, two days after I'd left my previous employer, um, onboarded with my new employer, signed yet another non compete to say that I can't do what I just did, which again, all of this was weighing on my brain, right? So. Did, uh, did you happen ago, to did you happen to ask the new employer, hey, listen, if what happens, what just happened, happened again, what's in this non compete to keep me from doing what I just did? Because I want to well, keep the new, getting the paid. new non compete is completely useless because the current state law is that you have to get the non compete to the new employee fourteen days before they start, oh. and give them written notice that they should go talk to a lawyer to review the non-compete before they sign it. Ah, okay. Well, my new non-compete was signed the day I started and I had less than two weeks between when this all started and when I, when I, you know, I, I gave my, my previous employer like five days notice or something. It was, it was crazy. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. So a week ago, Saturday, I was sitting there with my phone, still feeling a bit down about the whole thing. And I was looking around, and I discovered there are three categories of people in the state of Illinois who are uh, cannot have a non-compete. One of them is government contractors. So I went and discovered, yes, there is a, a state law that makes it a class four felony to attempt to use a non-compete to keep someone from taking a state contract. Also... I would have been um, guilty of a class four felony if I'd let them keep me from taking the contract. <laughs> so after I read that, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So I was much happier. Just, just I'm good. Let me, schedule my di- let me schedule my next Disney trip. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's already scheduled. That's in, De- that's in December. <laughs> Oh. My Disney, my, uh, my 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 standard December Disney slash um, uh, Royal Caribbean cruise week. Yes. All right. So here's my question: Which one yeah. of your sisters are going to try and sneak? Are you going to sneak in in the in the baby carriage? <laughs> oh, you didn't hear about this one? No. There was there was a viral TikTok and made the news here. There was a viral TikTok that a family snuck their teenager in in a baby carriage be, to so that they only paid they paid the cheaper ticket price admission price viral video claims to show family sneaking older child into disney I mean, world they don't using allow baby giant stroller carriages anymore so how did they so it was on tiktok so it's got to be true yeah A recent survey of Disney enthusiasts found that 92.6% believe the cost of a Disney World vacation is now out of reach for average families. The price of a single-day ticket to Walt Disney World Park is $109. Uh, the, 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 the ticket prices are high. They basically said, look, we have too many people here. So we can either put in artificial limits, or we can just raise the price until until we get just the right amount of people. In the end, I think they did both. They decided to put <laughs> limits in and raise the price because hey, why not? We only it's, want those who can afford to come to our, you know, to to our place. No, so I actually, I mean, I have an annual pass, so I don't pay per day, and. Um, well, yeah, because you have resident status. I mean, you're there so often. Well, I, I do own uh, Disney timeshares, so I yeah, have the Saratoga I mean, Springs, the Grand Floridian. I mean, you know, your Hollywood. your license is from there, so you know it makes sense. Uh, 
That would be it nice. Would be fun. But no, Colin. Because that no, 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 Shaggy, Shaggy, Shaggy. No, none of that is ever going to be true. Yes, Colin has because a, you'll never find me in some newspaper article starting Florida man. <laughs> Florida man writes Silverlight application for state for free. That's that would be as you know. Florida man writes application to track gator eating. Uh, you know. <laughs> Something like that. All right, so it's uh, seven, a little bit after uh, seven thirty, on the Central Time Zone. So we're going to get started into our double feature movie review, uh, partially because I've had four glasses of whiskey now, and partially because we're going to wrap this sucker up. Uh, but we do review two movies every week. Uh, in this episode, we are reviewing Granddaddy Daycare and Space Truckers. That's right. You heard me right. Space Truckers. Not with an F, but with a T. Um, you know, <clears throat> so Granddaddy Daycare is, was that Netflix? Is that available? Or Prime Video? I can't remember. Uh, that was Netflix. Okay. And Space Truckers was Roku? Freeview. Oh, Freeview via Roku, I think. So, so, uh, which one do we want to do first? Well, let's see. They both have the same person in it, so let's go with the older one first. Okay, Space Truckers it is. Yeah, it was weird that we did a George Went double feature. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I, uh, that's very odd. Thank you for pointing that out, Colin. And Colin, since you pointed that out, you get to go first with Space Truckers. Okay. So uh, back in the 90s, there was this thing going on where uh, so Dennis Hopper had um, said that Rip Torn pulled a knife on him back when they were doing Easy Rider in the 1960s. And so Rip Torn was suing Dennis Hopper for defamation for, for that story. And so it, one of the things that came out of that is that uh, Dennis Hopper actually offered Rip Torn a part in Space Truckers as a recompense for the whole uh, defamation thing. You know, you stop the defamation suit, I'll give you a part in Space Truckers. Now, I think that Rip Torn should have abandoned his lawsuit over for defamation and sued Dennis Hopper instead for threatening him with a part in Space Truckers. Um, I, I think maybe he could have gotten more money out of that lawsuit. Uh, Space Truckers... Um, this movie is from 1996, okay? I remember 1996. There was lots of good movies in 1996. Uh, I'm not going to find a list of good movies from 1996. I don't know how the effects in this movie are so bad, considering the number of people in this movie that you actually may have heard of. Um... And the quality of acting, I mean, not acting, actors, their acting is universally terrible. But there are some extremely good actors, actors who are like Shakespearean, well-known actors. In this complete and utter pile of crap, um, the story is very, very short, Um Man is trucker. Trucker doesn't like the companies, so he's an independent trucker. Gets screwed by the man anyway. So he takes an, uh, a load of sex dolls, which turns out to not be sex dolls. Surprise. Um, goes off in the, you know, instead of staying on the, on the space road, he decides to go off in the middle of nowhere randomly runs into someone who actually knows what the space dolls are and gets a remote from them. So this character, there's this character who created these robots to kill people. And he gets almost killed at the beginning of the movie. And then later, he shows up not actually dead in the movie to give the, the main uh, Dennis Hopper character a remote that can turn off 
the space doll slash killer android things, and then dies, and then the remote is immediately lost in space. Which means, what was the point of that character? It, it could have just been a random space pirate. There had no reason for it to have any connection to anything else. It, 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 it just... I don't know what the writers of this particular movie were thinking. It's like they just wrote down a whole bunch of things, put it in a blender, and then someone shot it and then had a bunch of kindergartners do the special effects. That's the movie. I, I don't I, I don't don't watch this movie. Don't 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 have this movie playing somewhere else in your house where you're not paying attention because your brain will turn to mush just by having this movie in the same house as you. Um, this movie does not deserve a kill with fire. This movie does not deserve a puke. It just, it's, it's, it's just not that good of a movie in the first place to even be anything other than Mega Man. And I just want to give this Mega Man. It doesn't deserve... It's it just, it's just no. I, it's a complete and utter waste of space. Mega meh. That is yeah. a so. So where does that fall on the scale? I, I think it still falls at the bottom of the scale. It's still down there with the puke and the kill with fire. It's just that, it's just utterly meh. So is it? So is it above puke? Is it? Below puke, we need to know it's, where. It's, 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 it's you can you can go ahead and count it as pukish. Okay, it, it's just it's just oh, bad. I, all right, all right. Um, I, I'll go next, and then you can do cleanup. Does that work, Mike? All right. Space truckers. You see names. Dennis Hopper. You know. Stephen Dorff. Debbie Mazar. George Went. <coughs> Power actors. You know. And, and then you see what Colin said. Released in 1996. Alongside other films. Like. Mars Attacks, Escape from L.A., Dragonheart, Lawnmower Man 2, Independence Day, The Arrival, Tremors 2, and then Space Truckers. Now, the other movie that was released during the same year, just to give you an idea of the caliber of movie, it's Barb on a Wire. Okay, uh, those two, these two movies, Barb on Wire and Space Truckers, level playing field. All right. Now, I am not as hate filled as Colin is towards Space Truckers. All right. I think there was a few redeeming qualities of Space Truckers. It had a decent plot. It had a decent story. It did have a few hiccups along the road. The cyborg guy being recycled from previous is just them not wanting to pay another actor, really. Um, however, uh, you know, realistically, uh, not a, a terrible movie. If it was made 10 years before it was made, if this had been made in 1986, you would have thought, sweet ass, this is Star Wars. All right? This is going to kick George Lucas's ass. All right? But the problem is, if it wasn't. It was made in 96 when we had Will Smith. This isn't even the fifth element. All right? And we'd had the fifth element by now. So we knew what good sci-fi looked like. 
And this ain't it. Now, I'm not going to give this a mega meh like Colin. I will give this just a regular old meh because that's what it deserves. It's not good. It's not bad. It's a waste of an hour and 35 minutes. But you are going to spend that hour and 35 minutes doing something. This might as well be on in the background while you're doing it. All right, Mike. I, wait, wait, wait. I got a question for you. Are you seriously putting this on the same playing field as Barb Wire, the Pamela Anderson movie? Well, it doesn't have as much as big of boobs, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, probably. Oh I haven't God. seen Barb on a Wire in a long time. Maybe it's time to revisit that one. Maybe that should make yeah, our list. Okay. Listen, I know you've you've had a lot to drink, so mm -hmm. you're mashing I up have... two different movies. That's why I'm asking. It's Barb Barb Wire. Okay, Barb Wire. Okay, that's that's the one with Pamela Anderson as the stripper, mm -hmm. and she kills somebody with her heel. And mm -hmm. ba Bird Bird on a Wire. Well, no, there's more words in that Barb Barb Wire because there's there's a there's a there's, a, there's a something in between there. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. No, I love you. Shaggy, you're drunk. Go home. I love you, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that. All no. Right. <laughs> okay, so there is. So it is barbed wire, but why is there this little winky tink in between? Oh, there's a dot. That's what I was confusing. It was a small picture. So you will have to excuse me because I don't have my reading glasses on. So I was so here I'll show you what I was confused by. So you'll notice there was there's this little dot in between barb and wire and I was and, confusing and that. And everyone knows that dot is universal for on on <laughs> on a All right. All right, let me get this out. let me do this. Yeah. Freaking thing. Yeah. This, this All right. Is, listen. Go ahead. Mike tell us what you think. So so as I go into this movie, I am pretty sure that I've seen this movie many, many moons ago on like HBO, I think, back when they had the whole and they flew in the thing. Right off the bat, I can tell we are doing we are dealing with a true quality production that didn't even bother trying. To, the, the wires are visible every damn where during, when they're doing the zero G scenes. George went getting sucked out of the window of the diner. You you don't realize how influential this movie really was because that scene was almost a a mirror image. Like they copied that scene almost to the to the frame in Alien Resurrection. Seriously, can you can you do something? Just put some tape. Like try anything, spray paint them, do something to hide the wires, please. Any, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. At least the harness, the clips, even you can't. Zero gravity sex is a zero gravity sex scene is not even enough to save this movie. The trailer that they're pulling is, it, we might as well just call this Johnny Six because it's, it's like no disassemble and start shooting at everybody. Um. Ignoring the whole half a man's Zippo lighter actually working in the vacuum of space, um, that scene brought about, brought about a line that I never thought I would hear in any way, shape, or form in real life or a movie. If I had an anus, I'm going to stop right there and let you watch the movie to see it. And after an hour of watching this movie and finally being threatened by the cold of space, Debbie Mazur finally has to put some clothes back on. This movie just proves that just because you have a bunch of famous names in the cast doesn't mean that the movie's going to be good. I'm not going to get his a puke. I, I, I can't. But it's getting a verp. The only reason it's not getting a puke 
is because, well, I, I kind of feel like the, ca- the, the cast tried. That's literally the only thing. And square pigs. That's, that's like the only redeeming thing I have about this movie. I think what I hate about this movie so much is that it's described as a comedy. And I'm like, where was the comedy? Square pigs. It's just... There's no... Uh, I mean, there was comedy no... in this kind of genre is Mom and Dad Saved the World from four years before this. And that had better special effects. And it was terrible. Better special effects. I felt like... the. It, the Oscars were between this and the movie that was playing at the drive-in during Explorers when they were flying in front too close to the screen. God, that was great. I watched Explorers. Flash. I watched Flash Gordon the other day. And that still do, reminded do me of that movie. not mess with my emotions, man. Flash Gordon is an amazing film. My and, dad and why remi- was it when the Android things were killing people it turned them into candy? My dad reminded me of Flesh Gordon, and I had to download that one. We were watching Flesh. We were watching Flash Gordon on TV, and I said, "This is this is kid appropriate because we had a couple of children in the room." I'm like, "Listen, the 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 bad guys are laughable. The good guys, you know, don't have sex with the women. Um, I'm like, you know, and the good the good people, you know, have clothes on." Like it's it's age appropriate. Nobody, I'm like you know nobody really dies that you see. Like this is like you know PG thirteen. That's okay. And my dad's like yeah, it's a lot better than Flesh Gordon. I'm like yeah, right. So you know this is the relationship my dad and I have. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So uh, next up, Granddaddy Daycare. So Colin, you went first before. We'll let you go first again. Yes. Okay, so Granddaddy Daycare, the third and final in the Daddy Daycare trilogy. So first off, so most of the cast are older people that um, actors and actresses that you know, which is kind of fun to see a whole bunch of them on the screen interacting with each other, um, and. Um, but they have some younger characters. Now, they couldn't get who they wanted for this movie. So they had to find actors who remind you of who they wanted for this movie. Okay? So first you have Reno Wilson. He's playing the main character. Um, so he's playing Kevin Hart, who's playing a character named Frank Collins. Okay? And then you have the bad guy. He's played by Alex Mappa. And Alex Mappa is playing um, Ken Jeong, who is playing Ned Tooley. So that's it. So you have, yeah, so you have actors playing other actors playing characters. Um, so basically the main... And, oh, and uh, so, uh, so Danny Trejo is playing... Um, Rena Wilson's um, um, father-in-law, who is an ex-con lawyer um, who lost all of his money to a Nigerian scam and is, lo- and is uh, early stage dementia. That, so, yeah, that's... Now, the movie starts badly because they're referring back to Danny Trejo's character's time in prison and they refer to prison with one slang word and he says no I don't like that slang word he uses other slang word and then he go to the next scene where he uses the slang word he didn't like in the first scene to refer to his time in prison um, so you're like did they forget what they wrote in the first scene when they wrote the second scene um, I, I don't know but that's actually, I, I say that's pretty much the worst part of the movie. Um, so uh, they're, they're running out of money. He decides to run a daycare for seniors. And so that's the reason that all the seniors are there. And the, um, 
the Ned Tooley character, you know, the one who's basically Ken Jong, is um, uh, finds out about it and he's trying to stop them and um, ends up with court. I, I kind of comes down to a, 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 I think a pretty good rule, which is I can't think of any movie that has Clint Howard in it that's bad. You know, it's like a it's like a, a mark that if if you can manage to get Clint Howard in your movie, then you're passable at least. And I'd say this movie, it's it's a good bit of fun. You know, if if I'd paid money to see it in a theater, I would would have been disappointed. But for you know, wasting ninety six minutes with some old actors and seeing what they look like now, eh, sure. I don't give this honestly. It almost goes into my category of um, Schneikies because any movie that I think I'm going to hate, I end up liking. It's actually a Schneikies. It isn't that good, so I'm going to give it. I'm not going to give it an SEG either. I'll just give it a big old smile. All right. Smile it is. Okay, so I had seen this before. Um, I, I couldn't place it, but I had watched this before. Uh, so at a certain point, it, it did become very familiar to me. Now, Colin is absolutely right. They, Reno Williams, or Wilson, you know, plays Kevin Hart to a T. And, um, you know, Roxana Ortega plays the part of Danielle Nicolette from Central Intelligence. All right. So they they basically went with lesser paid versions of actors. All right. Danny Trejo plays Danny Trejo. Uh, <clears throat> but then Hal Linden goes in for, um, you know, Murtaugh from uh, Leave the Weapon. You know, that's that's who we get. And so, you know, but then we end up, we do, we, we do end up with these other actors that we know. Uh, Linda Gray, George Went, Margaret Avery, y y Barry Bostwick, you know, Garrett Morris. You know all these people from other, uh, Julia Duffy, you know, from The Nanny. So you end up with a lot of very familiar actors and actresses. So, you know, you're instantly kind of taken in. Because these people are very good, um, I would say the the script is good. The it plays very close to the to the original Daddy Daycare script of hey we need to get money. This is a way that we can find to get money, but we run into a few hiccups along the way. Um, you know, now I know Mike's probably going to touch on this more so than than I have, you know, experience with. So I will leave it to Mike, but I think Danny Trejo, in my mind at least, did a did a good portrayal of someone with dementia, early onset dementia. Um, you know, Mike, like I said, has personal experience with this, so I'll let him talk to it. But I think this is probably one of Danny Trejo's better performances in, you know, Granted, it was a comedy role, but he had some really dramatic scenes in here, and I think it was really good. Um, you know, there are parts during this comedy movie where you really felt for these characters, and, you know, you wanted them to do well, and you you cared about how they were doing. Um, you know, so I, I like this movie, and the fact that I watched it a second time and I didn't just, you know, bug out and go with my initial impressions or speed watch through it, says how good this movie is to watch. So, you know, I would say that if you really liked Daddy Daycare, um, you know, you're going to like Granddaddy Daycare because it follows a lot of the same formula, but with enough of a difference that it's going to pull you in. And, you know, there's a lot of heart and soul in the story that you get invested in the characters and you really want to see them do well throughout it. So, you know, I, like I said, I, I, I think that you're going to like this, this movie and I will give it a, a smile. I won't give it a schnikes, but I'll give it a, a, 
a big smile. Um, like I said, it, it's a comedy, but it's got a lot of good drama in it. There's, and it, but it's not so much that it's overbearing. So there's plenty of levity in it. Um, there's plenty of, of goofiness in it, but you really do start to care about these characters. And, um, so that's, those are the moments in a movie that I think for a cheap movie like this, which was made on a fairly limited budget and kind of went straight to streaming or straight to video. Um, you know, that's kind of what you, what they strive for, right. Is to make you care about the characters. So yeah, smile for me, Mike. All right. Seventeen minutes and twenty three seconds into this movie, I suddenly get the plot because I was literally thinking about how I was going to rip this movie a new one for using this title twenty four minutes in we have the cliche move of getting all the famous old folks high, and I might just sit back and watch this one now because Barry Boswick might be the most entertaining thing about this movie um, as he gets older, I really I'm I'm liking his transition from Ace Hunter to crazy old guy, uh, except for his role as um, FDR American badass. <laughs> anyway, um, the, it really is turning into a who's who of aging actors. And but I, the one thing that is really starting to bother me, and uh, it, it, this may have a racial undertone to it, but why the hell does Danny Trejo love polka? so much i was that ever explained i'm trying to figure that part out because i i don't know um but like you guys i kind of just got sucked in by this movie so i don't have a whole lot of notes to it there, there maybe i was reaching but i like the subtle nod at the end when danny's holding a machete because wasn't that one i don't know if that role came before or after this movie um, well, and I agree with you. I think he, he did portray the early stage dementia well, uh, without going overboard. And that is kind of a touchy subject when you try to take that on. Uh, I, I'm giving this one a grin, not quite a smile. Um, I give it a grin, not as good as daddy daycare. But it was definitely better than Daddy Day Camp. Yep. So there you go. There's our double feature movie review. And now we will pick... There's, there's one other thing I was going to say that I forgot. And that is... There's a subplot with the main character's son having issues in high school. And... Um, trying out for um, a talent show for something he has no experience in. I just wanted to say, if you're going to have a subplot with a character who fails at getting into a talent show by singing, don't choose an actor who previously was the main character voice in Coco and obviously is a very good singer. Because it's like he did a really good job singing, and then his voice cracked at the end, and apparently that's the most worst thing that ever happened. And it's like we're going, it, 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 it lost. That, that's the one point in this movie where I was listening to going, I don't really like the subplot anyway, and that was just kind of stupid. Well, I think it was just a mechanism to get them to the failure point with that subplot, really. So Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, you could have, like, I don't know. If he'd actually done a bad job singing, fine. But they, they tried. They tried to eat the cake and keep it too. There, they tried yeah. to keep the audience entertained with a good song and pretend they did a bad job. Yep. So, Mike, how many do we have to choose from? Forty-six. Forty-six. Well, forty-seven. Forty-seven. Forty. Forty-nine. I'm sorry. Forty-nine. Okay, number eight. Why do I feel like we've watched this before? Um, hold on, I gotta sign in, make sure it's still available. 
Okay. This is on Netflix. It is called The Duff. Robbie Amell and... Okay, so uh, uh, a teen drama type thing. Yeah. Which has a link to the movies that we just watched. Okay. It has Ken Jong in it. <laughs> All right, and 24. 24. Oh, son of a... You... What I did I I'm not in the spreadsheet. You can see I'm not in the spreadsheet. On Amazon for our freebie Mannequin 2 on the move. Have you guys seen that? I have. No. I know you have. That's why I was like son of a Good news for you. Hollywood Montrose is still in it. It's the only holdover character. Jay, you're drunk. Go home. <laughs> Come on now. I'm just telling you, that's that's a positive part of the movie. I know. He is he is the only holdover character. Yep. All right. Well, that is great. <laughs> you, 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 still available? This is his... That's still available, yeah. Uh, it's it's on freebie, so. <laughs> kidding me. I tell you what, I looked at Space Truckers. It's available on like seven different streaming platforms. So <laughs> I'm sure Mannequin 2 is available on a lot. So, all righty, folks. Um, with that said, um... So, okay, I, I gotta ask this question uh, yep. before we leave. When you guys were watching the movie on Freebie, yep, did you see the commercial over and over and over again with them going to, on a trip and taking the, the fish with them? No. Yep. I'm, I, I don't. Every well, time. Every time I'm like, between... can I take the fish with me? No. Because I am a good parent and I know and a good pet owner and I know we're not taking a fish in an open bowl on a road trip to an aquarium. To, now, to what Kim, Kim and I have been truckers. We no. have been binging Chicago Fire on Freebie, and so between the commercials, I may not have seen it. it it's all a blur. The commercials between that. Uh -huh. um, the Lincoln Technical Institute commercial that there's no words and it's just uh, and they just show guys working on big diesel trucks. There are certain commercials that I've seen many, many times, and yes, the fishbowl one is one of them. I get I get a lot of political commercials, and I get really tired of those. So I'll be happy when November is over. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to PTR Radio here on the fabulous Intar Web. Don't forget to tune in in two weeks. That's right. We'll be back in two weeks, which is going to make us on the 10th. Wait a second. That's a holiday. Is it? That's Columbus Day, I think. Oh, oh. yeah. That's the it's a. It, oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's Indigenous People's Day. It's Indigenous Day. People's Day. It's not Columbus Day. We will celebrate Indigenous People's Day where we will talk about all the indigenous peoples. You know, and I think one thing we might be talking about next time are all of the new shows. I don't think enough new shows have shown up yet for us to have seen them. Yes. Um, and we can talk so about next time. And we can talk about canceled shows that I've watched because I've watched a lot of canceled shows that were canceled like a decade ago that I think maybe they should bring back. Because I watched a lot of stuff that you know, Mike and I started talking about before the show that maybe they should they should reinvent. And we're not talking about quantum leap. All right. We're talking about good stuff. So maybe we'll talk about those on the next show. So make sure that you tune in on the 10th for PTR Radio. Don't forget, you can always check out our website, PTRradio.com. Check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all the fun stuff. At PTR Radio is where you can find us on all those channels. Uh, we post stuff there periodically. 
It just depends. Uh, sometimes more than others. But, uh, you know, subscribe to us. Let us know that you're out there, and we'll follow you back. Uh, that's what we do. So we keep up with things like Nikki's Goats and, uh, you know, other things like that. And, uh, you know, next time I'll tell you about the, uh, the deal that I've got going on right now with a uh, cidery in upstate New York. And, Colin, you might need a bigger vehicle when we go. I'm just laying that out there right now. When we do go visit Mike, you might need to rent a semi truck. I'm, I'm just, it, we might need that kind of parking because the deal oh, is that boy. good. So, okay, well, you get the semi truck, I'll get the Trans Am. All right, we're hauling a, we're hauling an elephant to Mike's house. We're, we're gonna make it down <laughs> and roll it up <laughs> and and we're, gonna we're gonna do what they say can be done. done. Uh, so we yeah. got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Armies bound, but all bound is run. All right, folks. Uh, don't forget to uh, tell all your friends about the show. That's the only way that we really grow this show. So tell them about Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all that other fun stuff uh, at PTR Radio. And uh, you know, as uh, as the screen shows, you can always call in two one seven seven eight seven zero two three two. Leave yourself, leave us a uh, voicemail. And who knows, maybe next time you'll be on the radio show. So, uh, I'm Shaggy. I'm Colin. I'm Mike D8, man. Stick a fork in the spokes. We are done. Talk to you later. Bye.